from behind the scenes. Um, we are the Powerful Living Sunday School class here at Imani Temple, Church of God in Christ in beautiful Temecula, California. We are in our fellowship hall. So I'm looking around at everybody in the fellowship hall. And yes, we're live on Facebook. And later on today, we will be on our YouTube channel, ITT Sunday School. Our pastor and teacher is none other than Superintendent James Mason. Our assistant pastor is Elder Dwayne Solomon. And our superintendent of Sunday school is none other than Otis, Elder Otis Bryant. Today is February 13th, and I am Sister Tiffany Greenwood. Our subject for today is free from law through Christ. I'm giving you some time it's to grab your Bibles, tablets, laptops, whatever, because we're going to be in Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 14. Our Bible truth. We have to put our trust in Jesus Christ, who sacrificed his life on our behalf, the law cannot, the law cannot save us. Only faith in Christ. Our memory verse is in order that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might also come to the Gentiles so that we would all receive the realization of the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. And that's going to be Galatians chapter 3, verse 14. And I have read it in the Amplified Version. Our lesson aim, by the end of the lesson, we will understand Paul's contrast of faith in law versus faith in Jesus. Feel loyalty to Christ and demonstrate faith in Christ daily. 
life need for today's lesson, we will trust in Christ alone for our spiritual growth. Bible learning to understand that works of the flesh will not help anyone grow in the Lord. Our Bible application, to learn to seek a closer walk with the Lord for spiritual growth. Our thought to remember, we are to trust in the Holy Spirit, not in deadly legalism for spiritual growth. Heavenly Father, we ask, well, first of all, Heavenly Father, I'm not asking for anything. I am just grateful. I am thankful for waking up this morning. I am thanking you, Heavenly Father, for waking us all up this morning, for giving us an opportunity to glorify and to magnify your holy and righteous name. Because today is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Heavenly Father, help me to help your people understand today that we are not to live by the law, but we are to live by faith. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I'm so excited today, everyone, because... I, I, I don't know if some of you remember or not, but my favorite holiday is Resurrection Sunday. And this lesson is tapping right into it. I'm super, super, super excited, super excited. So let's go into the verses. Today we are reading from the Amplified Version. I did receive permission from a superintendent of Sunday School um, because I wanted to ensure that we all understood what God is trying to tell us instead of getting caught up in the thousand of those. and I want us to understand. I want us to have a good understanding today because remember, I said it's tapping into that whole Resurrection Sunday thing and so I don't want anyone to be confused. So let's get started. Galatians chapter three, verse one. You foolish and thoughtless and superficial Galatians. Who has bewitched you that you would act like this? To whom, right before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified in the gospel message. Verse two, this is all I want to ask of you. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as a result of obeying the requirements of the law or was it the result of hearing the message of salvation and with faith believing it verse three are you so foolish and senseless having begun your new life by faith with the spirit are you now being perfected and reaching spiritual maturity by the flesh that is by your own works and efforts to keep the law Verse four, have you suffered so many things and experienced so much all for knowing if indeed it was all for nothing? Verse five, so then does he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit and works miracles among you, do it as a result of the works of the law which you perform? or because you believe confidently in the message which you heard with faith. Verse six, just as Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness, as conformity to God's will and purpose, so it is with you also. Verse seven, so understand that is the people who live by faith with confidence in the power and goodness of God, who are the true sons of Abraham? Did I say verse eight? That was verse seven. Verse eight. The scripture for saying that God would justify the Gentiles by faith proclaimed the good news of the Savior to Abraham in advance with this promise saying, in you, shall all the nations be blessed. Verse nine, so then those who are people of faith, whether Jew 
or Gentile are blessed and favored by God and declared free of the guilt of sin and its penalty and placed in right standing with him along with Abraham the believer. Verse 10, for all who de depend on the law, seeking justification and salvation by obedience in the law and the observation of rituals are under a curse. For it is written, cursed, condemned to destruction, is everyone who does not abide by all the things written in the book of the law, so as to practice them. Verse 11, now it is clear that no one is justified, that is declared free of the guilt of sin and its penalty and placed in right standing before God by the law. For the righteous and the just, the upright, shall live by faith. Verse 12, but the law does not rest on or require faith. It is nothing to do with faith, but instead the law says he who practices them, the things prescribed by the law shall live by them instead of faith. Christ purchased our freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law and its condemnation by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, who hangs crucified on a tree, the cross. Verse 14, in order that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might also come to the Gentiles so that we would all receive the realization of the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. Amen? I am super excited to talk about this lesson today because um, all of the teachers from this year have been setting this lesson up and I hope that you were able to listen on last week because the teachers of all teachers, Elder Madison Farrar, she led us to this. I mean, she set us up pretty for this because we actually had multiple teachers that were talking about false teachings. This is the lesson. So go grab, get, get your Bibles, get your books, get the family because we're digging in today we're digging in today because what was going on and why paul had to make some clarifications is because of false teachings okay this is why he was talking to the galatians because for some reason they started to believe in false teachings so we remember who paul is right Paul, his original name was Saul, and he had, was making his little trip on Damascus Road, right? And he kind of sort of met Jesus, got slapped blind off of his horse and everything. Saul was a persecutor of Christians, okay? He was a persecutor of Christians. He hunted them down to torment them, put them in prison, okay? But Saul wasn't just any old type of person. He was educated, extremely educated. Well, I, I think Elder Madison Farah, you said that he spoke how many languages? A lot. He was well studied and versed in the Pentateuch, which is the first five books of the Bible. He knew it backwards and forwards. He was taught at the best university of his time. So, Paul's no idiot, right? Okay, so he kind of knows what he's talking about when he talks to the Galatians because he was Saul who believed in, and was teaching, you know, those false teachings. He was doing that. And then God stirred him in the right direction and he stayed on straight street, right? 
So he's talking to the Galatians right now because they start on Street Street. How did they end up on Damascus Road? Okay, so this is what we're talking about. So the Judaizers were Jewish Christians who believed that ceremonial practices of the Old Testament were still in effect in the New Testament. Doesn't it sound familiar? Somebody comes, there's a new teaching, there's a revelation. Jesus lays down the law and says, all of that right there, you weren't able to do it. I am the sacrificial lamb. I am the anointed one. I am the Messiah. I have come so that you may be truly saved. And guess what? You don't have to focus on this law anymore. But remember, we were talking about how the Judaizers, they had taken the Ten Commandments. And I think it was you, Elder Madison Farah, that said that they'd taken the commandments and then they wrote these books. That's an S, you guys. Books on all how, what God really meant when he gave these 10 commandments. And these are the rules that you really have to abide by. Is that what God said? When he gave the 10 commandments, did he give two tablets of 10 commandments or did he give books, right? But because they're so educated, they just know that this is really what God meant. Um, newsflash, Jesus Christ is 100% man and 100% God all by himself. I'm pretty sure he said what he meant. I'm pretty sure that when he took our sin, he hung on the cross. He gave up his life and died. And he was buried. And then he rose again on the third day so that we may have an opportunity to have salvation, to rekindle, and to have a relationship with our Father in heaven. And he said, it's finished. Did he want us to write do we need to write 14 books on how it really isn't finished? <laughs> or, or does he know what he's talking about? Okay, so we don't need to go and start pulling these rules up from way back in the Pentateuch because, well, I know that's what Jesus said, but for you, Tiffany, the rules are a little bit different. The rules are not different. Nothing has changed. So the Christians of Galatia, they were doing fine. They knew everything that was going on, but then here comes the holy of holy. Y'all act like you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking. Y'all been in church. Y'all know who I'm talking about. They want to tell you what to do. This is the proper way to dress. This is what you should be looking like because if you're truly a Christian, if you're truly saved, we all should be carbon copies and look exactly like this. We should act exactly in this manner. We should only like the same type of exactly 10 different foods, just 10, that's it. I don't do spicy. I'm never gonna do spicy. I just can't do spicy. I don't like to wear dresses that cover my feet because I don't really walk right and, and, and I'm gonna trip. I don't like to wear my hair like that. Sometimes I like to wear makeup because I think you should paint the barn. Sometimes you need to paint the barn. We have to be careful of taking those 10 commandments and then making up our own rules, right? So the Judaizers were trying to impose upon the Galatians, you have to be circumcised. You have to do this. You have to do that because that's what's, re what's required of us. Yeah, that was what required before Jesus. So 
This is why Paul, he comes out, and I know you think he's being harsh. Because you hear him say, you foolish and thoughtless. And you're just like, man, that's just cold. That's mean. Um, but when I hear my friends or family members say something crazy, I say, is you crazy? Do I know proper grammar? Of course I do. But I say it in that way. Why? Because I want them to know that I think that sounds crazy. What did you just say? What did you just do? Is you crazy? That's what Paul is saying. He says that you already know, like most of you have seen with your own eyes, you have experienced Jesus for yourself, like for real. And then you chose to just all of a sudden, this is the way we need to do things. You're not Jewish. I'm sorry, you're not Jewish. Growing up, my mom always took us to Midnight Mass. I love Midnight Mass. I love it. I told you guys, I love Resurrection Sunday. So when you go to Midnight Mass for Christmas, they do everything from Jesus' birth to his death, all the symbols. You get to see all the hymns. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. We're not Catholic. Do you think I did all that skating and kneeling and I'm not Catholic. <laughs> no. But when they started singing the hymns, I sang every one of them. That's, that's me. Yes, yes, I'm a Christian too. And I know these hymns. I can sing these songs and I know them. But I'm not expected to follow all of these legalistic things that they've chosen to do. Why? Because I'm not disrespecting God. I'm not disrespecting their house. We have to be careful getting wrapped up in appearances and how we think should look and how things should sound and how, because you sound foolish. Because listen to what Paul tells them. You sound foolish, thoughtless, and superficial. Uh, in a nutshell, you sound crazy. You is crazy. <laughs> right? Why are you doing these things when you know better, you've seen better? When you know for a fact, you've been taught the right way. You know of the right thing, right? Legalism is what's getting us in trouble now. Just look at the world now. Every time you turn on the TV now, every time you read an article or, it's a form of legalism, false teaching, adding things to God's word that he didn't put there. We have to know the word for ourselves. That's why I wanted you to specifically read it in the Amplified so that you weren't getting caught up. No, this is what Jesus said. The Galatians knew they had not received the Holy Spirit by obeying the Jewish laws. Remember I told you, they started on straight street. They knew exactly how they came by salvation. They knew that they came by salvation by accepting that Jesus Christ died on the cross, right? For their sin. Believing he died, he was buried, and then he rose again on the third day and confessing, right? With their own mouth that they're sinners and they need to be saved. They did that right off the bat and started on straight street. Who bewitched you? Who made you go on a different path? What are you doing over there? <laughs> How did you get over there? We were all perfectly fine. We were over here. Gentiles, Christians are saved. 
and over here. Why are you over there with crazy? Who tomorrow will have a different rule that you're not going to comply with or can't comply with. I mean, because if you could just start making up books, you mean to tell me that they weren't just making up other stuff on the fly? Like each city also had their other little, re you, y'all act like you don't know yourself. We're people, we're people. All got a level of schizophrenia, weird, right? Dear God, don't let us have a bad day. We just start making up things. We have to be careful. We have to be careful. How did you, is you crazy? Just, you did the ABCs. That's it. Live the way that Jesus gave the example. That's it. Jesus was circumcised. Jesus is Jewish. <laughs> we are not Jewish. Right? Okay. So it's not a tomato tomato thing. This is that's not a requirement. In the word of God, it tells us that that's not a requirement. Y'all know the word for yourself. You know how you can combat false teaching? Ask me for scripture. And then you all read it together. Read it together. And then you can see, because I'm pretty sure the Holy Spirit, if it's in the both of you, will tell you the same thing. Right? It's very dangerous. I've been reading since I was three. It's very hard to try to convince me otherwise when I can read the words myself. <laughs> read the words yourself. And if they can't give you any scriptures, dust your feet. Go talk to God for yourself. The Holy Spirit, you already, you, you already have those. The Holy Spirit is just like, that ain't right. <laughs> that's, that's not right. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. That's not what you're supposed to do. We grow spiritually through the Spirit's work in us. Okay? So you have to have the Word of God in you for the Holy Spirit to work in you. Okay? Read that Bible. I don't care if you physically pick up a Bible. Use technology too. The Bible will actually read to you if you just press the button. Do that. Do that. But get the word in you. And it helps to have the word in you so that when those false teachers arrive, because they're here, they're everywhere, you'll know. You'll know and you'll be able to combat it. The power of the spirit is needed for sanctification. And God does the sanctifying. God is the one that sets apart. Not man and their 8 million rules that they make up. All. No, God. God does that. So I have a question for you. You know, I always have questions. <laughs> I only have three days. Why did Paul call the Galatians foolish? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, the answer, right? But the root cause was they were following people. People got them off on a whole different path. They actually chose, right, to listen to somebody else. They knew the right way. They knew they were on straight street. They were doing the things that Jesus had told them to do. They were following his way. And then all of a sudden, 
Somebody told me I needed to do this. Um, we need to stop getting wrapped up in what somebody said and what they said. My pastor said that they are a bunch of liars. <laughs> and I believe my pastor. I'm looking at it. So <laughs> I believe my pastor. So they can't tell me nothing. Okay. You have to bring me scripture. If Sister Tiffany is doing something wrong, hey, I don't have any problem with being set on the right path. But don't trip. Don't think you're going to just come to me and just tell me something. If you don't have scripture, um, my sister, my brother, keep it pushing. <laughs> my, my parents are right there. They'll tell you. Uh, that sister right there, mm -mm, she don't play that. You need to give her scripture. And if I don't believe you, you'll know it because I have questions. Because, well, when I read, you know, you'll have to help me understand because did I tell you I've been reading since I was three? Come on, you're gonna have to work with me a little bit, okay? It had been at least 600 years before God gave Moses the Jewish law, okay? Abraham was the founding father of the Jewish nation. Paul reminded the people, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, the real children of God are those who put their faith in God. And I, I want to put a period there, but it's not a period there, but I just want to let that marinate. <laughs> the real children of God are those who put their faith in God, not the law. Y'all, if we can live according to the law, somebody answer me a question. Would Jesus have had to die? We all could have been Jewish. Because we all could have kept the law. Newsflash. Oh, well, I have just one question. Were the Jewish nation able to keep the law? No, the Jewish nation wasn't even able to keep the law and they had enough nerve to start writing books. Y'all, you're not listening to me. <laughs> they couldn't keep the law and decided to make some more rules. That they, could, that they couldn't keep themselves either. This is what Paul was telling you. He says, I know these people, I was educated with them. They crazy. Why are you over there? I know that they crazy because I was chief crazy. Did he not say that he was the chief sinner? He wasn't just a sinner. He was good at it. So he said, I'm the chief sinner. So he knows crazy. So Paul was able to detect crazy and to tell you, hey, hey, I know you're not supposed to be over there. I know that it doesn't make any sense. And he said, and you know it because you were on the right path. You saw Jesus with your own eyes. Some of you even followed him and watched him do miracles. Like, really? And how did you let crazy get you diverted and over there. Yeah, you only live once, but you don't have to live crazy. The true design of God from the beginning was for salvation to be offered to all nations, including Gentiles. If the Jews couldn't live by the own law in which they were given, they were handed. God had the divine plan. He's just like, you know, I could save them and everybody else too. I got you. God has us. God is the one that has us. Not man, not ourselves. We ain't that smart. God is all powerful. God is all knowing. 
God is everywhere all the time. I am literally just sitting here in the fellowship hall at Imani Temple Church of God in Christ in Temecula, California. I am nowhere else. Physically. Nowhere else. I'm in this one place. When I trip and I think that, you know, I'm doing something great, God reminds me I have created absolutely nothing. <laughs> Tiffany, you seem to be having a moment. So whatever you created, I'll let you go first. You need a little more time? Okay, I created the heavens and the earth. You need a little more time? Yeah. I mean, come on. Come on. We have, it's through God. It's through God. I told you this lesson leads us in to Resurrection Sunday. Your love, I know everybody's so excited, Valentine's Day, whatever, whatever. okay. God is love. God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son so that we may have an opportunity at everlasting life. Do y'all understand? By living by the law, we could never be with God. Our relationship was severed. There was no way for us to be with God, but when he sent his son, to die on the cross and for him to be buried. And then on the third day, he rose again. That's the bridge. That's why Jesus Christ is the bridge. He gets us back into relationship with God. That's love. <laughs> That's John 3.16. That's for real John 3.16. That's the good news. That's the good news. So tomorrow, you should be thinking and loving on God. Because he gets us back. He gave us a way out from the beginning. It says the true design of God from the beginning was for salvation to be offered to all nations. That includes you. Me. Us, right? But it's a gift. You have to actually put your hand out, ask for it, and take it. It's a gift. It doesn't just happen, okay? A gift, in order for you to accept it, you have to put your hand out, ask for it, and then take it, right? That's what the ABCs are all about, that you hear us talk about every Sunday. We're offering you a gift. And we're hoping that you reach your hand out and you take it. Because Jesus Christ died for all nations to have an opportunity to have a relationship with God. We are no longer bound by the law. That's it. No longer bound by the law. We are justified by faith. That's what Galatians 3.11 is telling us. We're justified by faith. Paul wants Gentile readers, he wants us, all of us, to know that they have no need to jump through legalistic hoops. Those are false teachings, y'all. If God didn't say it, mm, mm, it's up for interpretation. You go ahead and get into your prayer closet and you talk to God about it because if he didn't say it, that's all I'm gonna say on that. God provided for their salvation when he entered into covenant with Abraham. You know, in Sunday school, I remember being little and we were singing the song, Father Abraham has many sons, has many sons, right? We are sons and daughters from Abraham. The promise that God made Abraham, he's our father, right? Who else has that promise? 
We do. We do. I have another question for you. I know. Oh, no. I don't know. I may not be able to give my other question. Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> How do we become children of Abraham? Through the faith of God. Through the faith of, in God. Through the faith in God. Not by the law. Not by law, not by legalistic teachings and terms and blah, blah, none of that. Through faith in God. Why? Because God first loved us. <laughs> John 3, 16. God first loved us. When Paul wants to prove that the law only condemns, isn't that funny? Remember I said the law was given to the Jews and they couldn't follow the law, but they still wanted to make someone live according to the law? Does that make any sense? Does this happen every day? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Everyone is condemned to death because no one can keep the law. Remember it said that if you broke one of the laws, it's just like breaking all 10. Jesus fixed this, right? He's thinking he's fixing this. He took the 10 commandments and he did what? He gave us two. He said, love thy God, love your name. Guess what? We have a million books. <laughs> I tried to explain that and it's two. He took the ten and made them two. Y'all, love. Love each other. Love yourself. Love God. And we can do this. The law was temporary. It was a temporary fix. It was just setting us up. You got it. From my favorite holiday, Resurrection Sunday. Send us up for Christ. Once Christ comes, the age of faith breaks in and we do not need the garden. No more. No more. We are saved by faith in God. We can fix our lives. We cannot. We cannot. I don't know why I said that. We cannot fix our lives on our own. We need God to help us. Stay connected to the vine. Stay connected to Jesus Christ. We can't do this walk without him. We can't. We need him. We can't do it without him, right? I also want to let y'all know we can't do it without each other. We need to learn how to stand in a gap for one another. When someone is trying to give you some constructive criticism and they bring the scripture, hey, shake it off. Get off of Damascus and get back on Straight Street. Go where you're supposed to be. Let's all get to glory together. Let's encourage one another. Let's love on one another. Let's love one another. Love for real. Love for real. Because none of us can keep the law. None of us. Amen. I have just one last question. How did Christ redeem us from the curse of the law? He hung on the cross and died by our sins. Mama, you better tell it. That's, that's Mama Mason, y'all. <laughs> that's right. That's right. He hung on the cross and died for our sins. 
He hung on the cross and died for our sins. And remember that tomorrow, everybody. Jesus Christ hung on the cross and died for our sins because he loved us. Yeah. Next Sunday is February 20, 2022. And our lesson is going to be on heirs to the promise. We are finishing up Galatians chapter 3. And then we're going into Galatians 4, 1 through 7. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to contact Elder Otis Bryant at Otis Bryant at Imani Kojic.com. Our superintendent would love to answer any questions and concerns and address any concerns you may have. As we've been talking about all day, you too can be a child of Abraham. You too can receive the gift if you A, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. B, believe that he died on the cross, was buried, and on the third day, God the Father physically raised him from the dead. And C, confess that you are a sinner and Jesus is Lord. He is the Christ and Savior who can forgive you of your sins. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity and for the reminder that you first loved us. And we are grateful, Heavenly Father, we are grateful that you had, were willing, were willing, Heavenly Father, to provide us a way of escape by giving us an allowing your son, your only begotten son, to die on the cross for our sins. Thank you, and we ask that you protect each and every one of us as we go about our weeks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. There's a praise in the temple. It's service time.